If you are a DIY enthusiast working in your garage or an experienced mechanic, there are lots of parts that gives you headache. They're either too hard to access or too complex to work within your garage. Transmissions fall into this category because they are complicated components. It is the thing to avoid home repairs on a transmission, but gears and the inner workings of modern gearboxes are too interesting to ignore. Planetary gears fall into this category and as a technology that has been around for thousands of years. So, what are planetary gears? How do they work? We have gathered some works for you in this video and we do our best to help you understand the basics of planetary gears. Let's get started. An epicyclic gear train, also known as a planetary gear set, consists of two gears mounted so that the center of one gear revolves around the center of the other. A carrier connects the centers of the two gears and rotates the planet and sun gears mesh so that their pitch circles roll without slip. A point on the pitch circle of the planet gear traces an epicycloid curve. In this simplified case, the sun gear is fixed and the planetary gears roll around the sun gear. At around 500 BC, the Greeks invented the idea of epicycles, of circles traveling on the circular orbits. With this theory, Claudius Ptolemy and the Almagest in the 2nd century was able to predict planetary orbital path. The Antikythera mechanism, around 80 BC, had gearing which was able to approximate the moon's elliptical path through the heavens, and even to correct for the nine-year precession of that path. The Greeks would have seen it not as elliptical, but rather as epicyclic motion. In the 2nd century, Ptolemy used rotating deferent and epicycles that form epicyclic gear trains to predict the motions of the planets, predictions of the movement of the Sun, Moon and the five planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn across the sky assumed that each followed a trajectory traced by a point on the planet gear of an epicyclic gear train. This curve is called an epitrochoid. Epicyclic gearing was used in the Antikythera mechanism around 80 BC to adjust the displayed position of the moon for the ellipticity of its orbit and even for the apsidal precession of its orbit. Two facing gears were rotated around slightly different centers and one drove the other not with mesh teeth but with a pin inserted into a slot on the second. As the slot drove the second gear, the radius of driving would change, thus invoking a speeding up and slowing down of the driven gear in each revolution. In the 11th century, epicyclic gearing was reinvented by Kalaf Almirati. In Andalus, his geared water clock employed a complex gear train mechanism that included both segmental and epicyclic gearing. Richard of Wallingford, an English abbot of St. Albans Monastery, later described epicyclic gearing for an astronomical clock in the 14th century. In 1588, Italian military engineer Agostino Ramelli invented the bookwheel, a vertically revolving bookstand containing epicyclic gearing with two levels of planetary gears to maintain proper orientation of the books. In 1650, French mathematician and engineer Desargues designed and constructed the first mill with epicycloidal teeth. Epicyclic gearing is also available which consists of a sun, a carrier, and two planets which mesh with each other. One planet meshes with the sun gear, while the second planet meshes with the ring gear. For this case, when the carrier is fixed, the ring gear rotates in the same direction as the sun gear thus providing a reversal in direction compared to standard epicyclic gearing. Planetary gear trains provide high power density in comparison to standard parallel axis gear trains. They provide a reduction in volume, multiple chymatic combinations, purely torsional reactions, and coaxial shafting. Disadvantages include high bearing loads, constant lubrication requirements, and accessibility, and design complexity. The efficiency loss in a planetary gear train is typically about 3% per stage. This type of efficiency ensures that a high proportion of the energy being input is transmitted through the gearbox, rather than being wasted on mechanical losses inside the gearbox. The load in a planetary gear train is shared among multiple planets. Therefore, torque capability is greatly increased. The more planets in the system, the greater the load ability and the higher the torque density. The planetary gear train also provides stability due to an even distribution of mass and increased rotational stiffness. Torque applied radially onto the gears of a planetary gear train is transferred radially by the gear without lateral pressure on the gear teeth. In a typical application, the drive power connects to the sun gear. The sun gear then drives the planetary gears assembled with the external gear ring to operate. The whole set of planetary gear system revolves on its own axis and along the external gear ring where the output shaft connected to the planetary carrier achieves the goal of speed reduction. A higher reduction ratio can be achieved by doubling the multiple staged gears and planetary gears which can operate within the same ring gear. The method of motion of a planetary gear structure is different from traditional parallel gears. Traditional gears rely on a small number of contact points between two gears to transfer the driving force. In this case, all the loading is concentrated on a few contacting surfaces, making the gears wear quickly and sometimes crack. 
but the planetary speed reducer has multiple gear contacting surfaces with a larger area that can distribute the loading evenly around the central axis. Multiple gear surfaces share the load, including any instantaneous impact loading evenly, which make them more resistant to damage from higher torque. The housing and bearing parts are also less likely to be damaged from high loading as only the planet carrier bearings experience significant lateral force from the transmission of torque. Radial forces oppose each other and are balanced, and axial forces only arise when using helical gears. If you found value in this video, then make sure hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and if you want to learn more, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.